In this video we're going to look at various modelling techniques in order for us to create the trout model that you can see here. We'll begin by looking at how we can create a component from a bitmap in order for us to create a texture. Then we'll also look at various modelling techniques, the two rail sweep and the create shape tool in order for us to model the basic fish shape. And then we'll look at overlaying the texture on the basic fish shape in order for us to get the finished part that you can see here. So let's just go to File, Close. And then we're going to go and create a new file. So in here we're going to work with a single sided job. My width is going to be 12 inches, height is 4 inches, material thickness is 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to set my Z0 position to be on the material surface. My XY datum position is going to go in the lower left hand corner. Modeling resolution, I'm going to set that to high. And then the appearance, I'm going to choose Canadian maple from the drop down list. And then we could go ahead and press OK. So let's go ahead and tile our windows horizontally. That way I can see the 2D view at the top and I can see the 3D view at the bottom there. Now as I said, we want to create a model that's based on an imported image. So one way of doing this is by going into this option here where we could import a bitmap and then we could trace around it using the various drawing tools and then we'll take those a stage further and look at modelling them into components so it would create an overall model of the part that we traced. What I want to do is to create a component directly from an image and this will be part of my modelling process. So to do that, if we go over to the modelling tab, you'll see on the second row we have an option here to create a component from selected or imported bitmap. And so when I select that, it's just going to allow you to search for an image file on your computer that you can bring in and it will turn it into a component. Okay, so from the trout project folder we've got this rainbow trout JPEG here you can open that up and you'll see that it's created a component based on that image where it's created the Z heights based on the light and dark areas of that bitmap so you can see that we've got a 3d model here in the 3d view we also have a grayscale representation of that model in the 2D view and we can also see that it's now been added to our component tree. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to align our component to the centre of the job. So to do that I'm just going to select it, I'm going to come over here to our alignment tools and we're just going to align that to the centre of a material there. We could go ahead and press close. So if that aligned what I'd like to do now is just alter the size of this. So again with that selected, let's go over here to set selected object size. We're going to make sure that link XY is checked, that way it will scale up in proportion. I'm just going to alter the height of this. So we're going to make the height of this 4 inches. Go ahead, press apply and you'll see it's automatically scaled that in proportion for me at a height of 4 inches. And we could go ahead and close that down. And so then what we'd do at this stage is we'd start to draw up the vectors that form all of the basic shapes using the various vector drawing tools. And then we'd take those and then we'd create the components using the modelling tools. Now as this is a modelling exercise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import vectors that I've already drew in the software. I'm going to look at using those to model the basic shapes. So to do that, let's go to File, Import, I'm going to import vectors from the uh, Trout Files project folder. I'm just going to bring in troutvectors.eps, press Open, and you'll see that they've been added to our job there. And so these are all the vectors that form the basic shapes of the trout. They're all drawn in the software using the polyline tool, with the exception of the eye here that would have been drawn with the ellipse tool. Then we spend around 10-20 minutes drawing and editing the vectors, so we're going to node edit mode and we'd look at smoothing some of those nodes just to get the correct shape. We're just really looking at following the shapes that we can actually see in this image here. So as I said, around 10-20 to 20 minutes we'd have had all of these vectors in place. 
Now if you're not familiar with drawing vectors in the software, then it'd be a good idea to go and look at all of the videos in the vector drawing section of the tutorial browser. So what I'd like to do now is organise my vectors onto layers. So if we go to the layer bar at the top here in our view control, we'll see here that we've got a layer here called layer 1 and we also have a layer here called import trout vectors. Now this layer was created when we imported the vectors. As when you import vectors it automatically assigns a layer for all those vectors to go onto. So what I'd like to do here is I'd just like to take layer 1, I'd like to rename that, so I'm just going to select it again so that I can change the name of this. And I'm just going to type in trout texture because we know that that texture component is on that layer. And then we're going to go on to the next layer here and we're just going to change the name of that one to outline vectors. I'm just going to click in the space there to come out of the layers bar. Last set of vectors that I'd like to look at now are the vectors that we're going to use in order for us to model the basic shapes using the two rail sweep. I'm just going to click in the white space just to deselect all of those vectors. I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to take this vector here. I'm going to hold down shift and select this vector here. I'm going to zoom out again. And then I'm also going to hold down shift and select this vector and shift to select this vector. So holding down shift enables me to select more than one vector or object at a time. So these four highlighted vectors that we've got here, we're going to use the two rail sweep in order for us to model the basic shape. So I'd like to put those onto their own separate layer. So I'm going to right click here, I'm going to say move to layer, new layer, I'm going to give this a name, so I'm going to call this one Two Rail Sweep. And I'm going to make that layer invisible, inactive. Go ahead, press OK. You'll see that the vectors have now disappeared from this layer. And if I go to my layers drop down, you'll see a Two Rail Sweep layer has been created. We've got data on it. It's currently invisible. If I just switch that on, you'll see that those vectors are in place there. Let's just turn that off and let's just take a moment to talk about all of the different vectors on those different layers. So this time I'm actually just going to go into the layers tab. I'm just going to switch everything off for the time being. So click on that light bulb to turn everything off. Then I'm just going to go in and individually select the uh, light bulb to turn that particular layer on. So we've got the trout texture on, which we know is our component that we created from that bitmap. And we're going to look at using this later on in the tutorial to overlay onto some shapes that we'll create shortly. Let's just turn that off. Next layer we have are the outline vectors. So you'll notice that uh, quite a few of the vectors here actually overlap the actual main shape of the fish. And the reason for that is when we come to create shapes using the create shape tool, we want everything to blend together. And that's why we have that overlap there. We don't want vectors next to each other wall to wall as we won't get the effect that we want from it. We want to make sure that our components blend into each other and we adjust the look of whether something is in front or behind by adding heights, base heights, tilts and fades. And we'll look at that later on in the tutorial. We also have this vector here that actually does represent the outline which we'll look at uh, in order for us to crop shapes to. And then we have our two rail sweep layer here. So you can see we've got two vectors that represent the sort of basic shape of the trout. And we're going to use these vectors as our drive rails. And then we have two vectors here that represent cross sections in which we're going to sweep these shapes through the two rails. Now before we go ahead and create any shapes, I just want to add in one more layer. We're going to call this layer components. So any components that I create, I'd like to add them to this layer. So I'm going to take that, I'm actually going to move it up to the top of the list so that I can still see all my vectors on top of the components that I create. 
So I make the components layer the active layer. We can see that it's bold and we've got our two rail sweep layer switch on. So now I could go ahead and start to create some shapes. So let's go into the modeling tab. Now as we've organized our vectors into layers, it only makes sense for us to organize our components into levels. We can see that we've got our rainbow trout texture component here in a level called level 1. Now I'm going to rename this level. To do that, I right click on level 1, use the option here, rename level, and I'm just going to call this level trout. I'm going to right click on the level again, and this time I'm going to use the option to insert a new level. Next that will just create a new level for me. I'm going to right click here, rename that level, and this time we're going to call this one basic fish shape. So I've got two levels, one has a component in there, which I can see that there. And I'm going to switch that trout level off for the time being. You can see the active level is the basic fish shape, it's bold, it's blue, and now we're ready to create components. Any components that I create now is going to be added to that level. So let's go into the two rail sweep form. So the first thing I need to do is select my two vectors that are going to act as drive rails. I'm going to hold down shift to select both of those, say use selection, and those vectors are now rails. So the next thing that I need to do is apply a cross section. Now I'm going to look at using this rounded shape here, so I'm just going to select it and I'm just going to apply that into the two rails just by clicking on the node there. Now if we just go ahead and press apply, we can see how that looks. Okay, so it's not too bad. I can see that we're actually maintaining the height all the way through that fish shape, right from left to right. Okay, now as we're working with quite a natural form, uh, it's probably best that I use this option here to scale the cross sections with the width. What that will do is where our two rails are closer together, we're going to have less height, where they're further apart, we're going to get more height, so we're going to get more of a natural shape. So when I apply that, you'll see how it tapers at the bottom there, we've got more height, the main body of the fish, and where the tail begins at this point here where our two rails are closer together we have less height. So it's always a good option to use uh, scale cross sections with width when you're working with organic or natural shapes. So the next uh, adjustment that I'd like to make is I'd like to make the fin a little flatter. And so to do that, all I'm going to do is take this cross section here, this rather flat profile, and I'm just going to apply that to the end of the two rails there. And you can see that the, my node has changed colour, so when I apply that, what's happening here is we're starting off with this round shape, and then it's blending into the flat cross section there. Now that's not too bad, however I'm losing a little bit of the curvature in the fish here, so I might look at applying another cross section. So I'm going to select the uh, curve shape here, and I'm just going to look at applying it somewhere around here, and then again let's go ahead, press apply, and we can see there now that we've got the curve shape going back into a curve shape, which is then going off and tailing off into the flat shape. Okay, so it's looking more like I want it to. One last thing, I'm just going to take that flat shape, I'm just going to apply that right at the beginning where the tail would actually start, just to give that a little bit more definition. And if we go ahead and press apply, we can see how that looks. Okay, so that looks good, let's put that in Z, we'll give that a name, I'm going to call this one Basic Fish Shape. We could go ahead, press apply, and then we could close that down. So there we have the basic fish shape. If we go to our layers tab, I'm going to turn off the two rail sweep, and I'm going to switch on the outline vectors. Okay, so you can see that is now switched on, we can see the vectors there. We're going to look at cropping our shape that we've just created to this vector here. So to do that, let's go into the modeling tab. I'm going to select my component and then I'm going to hold down shift and select the vector that I'd like to crop that component to and then I'm going to come over here and use the option to clear area of selected component outside selected vector. So this basically works like a cookie cutter. 
and when I select that you'll see it's just removed everything outside of that vector so now we've got more of a realistic looking fish shape there. So now we're ready to model in all of the other shapes that form that fish shape. So we'll start by looking at the eye, so I'm going to select that vector here, we're going to go into the create shape tool, I'm going to go to the round profile, angle, I'm just going to hit the slider up to the top to 90 degrees. I can see they've got quite a bulbous shape there, so I'm just going to look at reducing the height of that by using the option here to scale to an exact height. Very small height here of 0 0.05, press apply so you can see how that looks. Not too bad, you can see it's coming up and it's just going off at the height of 0 0.05. They've got a nice button look there. Put that back in Z, we'll give that a name, we'll call this one I, and we'll go ahead and start a new component. Now we're going to look at this gill shape here. Now we know in reality that this shape is quite a shallow shape and it has height on the right hand side where we see it sort of tilt outwards. So we're going to look at a technique for us to create that look. So if that's selected, I'm going to go with a round profile. The angle here, we're going to go with a very small angle of 5 degrees in this case. I'm going to set the final height to no limit. Let's just go ahead, press apply to see how that looks. Okay, so you can see we can barely see anything at the moment if we take a look there in the 3D view. Okay, so it's uh, not too bad as we haven't finished this process yet. And what I'd like to do is look at applying a tilt to the right hand side. And that's just going to basically give us a little bit of a wedge on the right hand side just to give us that shape that represents that gill. So to do that, let's use the tilt option. So I need to set my anchor point, so I'm going to set it from the left hand side as I'd like to tilt in the right hand side. I'm just going to click over to the right hand side and you'll see that by default it's created that tilt at 10 degrees there. Okay, We can obviously see that that is quite uh, a large tilt that we've got there, so we just need to look at reducing that. So I could just use the arrow here and that will open the slider bar and then I could just look at reducing that down and we can see that that one degrees seems to do the trick there. You can go ahead give that a name, so I'm going to call that one Gill, press apply, and I'm going to close that down and put that back in Z. So then I'd like to crop our gill component to the shape of our fish. So to do that, let's just select that gill component. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select the fish component. So not only can we crop components to vectors like we did earlier, we can also crop them to components. So it will always crop to the last component in your selection. We'll go ahead, clear area of selected components outside selected vectors, or in this case components, and you'll see it's cropped that to the shape of our fish. Now if we take a look at the gill itself, we know that in reality uh, the actual harsh line of the gill only comes up to around here and then everything else at the top actually blends in to the fish's body. So we need to look at replicating that in our model. To do that we're going to use some sculpting techniques to enable us to smooth the top area in but allow us to keep this hard line that represents the gill there. So let's go and select the gill component and we're going to go and use the sculpting tools. Okay, so you can see we're now in sculpting mode. I'm just going to maximize the 3D view there. So we're going to look at using the smooth tool to blend the gill into the fish's body. So let's just up the diameter to around 80. Um, we're going to go with the strength of around 60 in this case. And then the smoothness, I'm going to keep that set to 70. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to blend into my modelling plane. So I'm going to use this option here to preserve transparency. And that will enable me to actually blend my smooth tool and my model into the modelling plane itself. And that will ultimately be blending into the basic fish model that's underneath. Now to help me see what's underneath, we're going to use the option here, show grayscale background, and that will allow me to see the rest of the model. So let's start by just going around the part. Okay, I'm just going around, 
my mouse down you see that I'm actually going into the modeling plane here but that's okay because I could look at cropping this shape back to the overall fish shape afterwards you'll notice that this shadow here has appeared and this is basically showing me how it's interacting with the actual fish shape of the model underneath so I can see we've got a nice hard line there that represents that gill shape what I need to do is I just need to remove the line up the top here so that it blends in so we don't see the harsh line of that shape and then it actually blends into the, the fish underneath so to do that, what I'm going to do is again, just using the smooth tool, I'm just going to go back and forth and you'll see that that shadow is now being lost there. Okay, so you can see that we're really smoothing that in to the shape of the fish shape underneath. Oh, I just want to come down a little bit down here. Okay, that's not too bad. I just want to smooth that bit off there. And I think I'm happy with that. You can see we've clearly blended the top into the body of the fish, but we've still retained this line that represents the gill shape. So here we could go ahead and press keep, and then we'll press OK. So there we have the gill blending into the top of the fish, and we actually have the line that represents the fish's gill. So now we can take that component, hold down shift, and we're going to select the main fish component, then we're going to look at cropping that so we tidy that area out where we blend it into the modeling plane. So let's just tile the windows horizontally. And now we can look at creating all of the shapes that represent each one of these fins. So I'll select this vector first. I'm going to go into the create shape form. Okay, so for this one, we're going to go with a curve profile. Let's knock that up to around 30. Okay, so you can see that there. I'm going to give that a base height. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a vertical height underneath that shape, 0 0.05. Apply that. You can currently see it's actually adding on top, so let's set the combine mode of that to merge so that it blends in there. Okay, now the actual shape of that isn't too bad, but what I'd like to do is look at applying a tilt just to lift up the top area of my component up. So again, let's use the tilt option. We're going to set our anchor point. We're going to go roughly from the bottom here up to the top over here. Okay, so that will do that default of 10 degrees. So that 10 is a little bit too much. So I might just want to look at reducing that ever so slightly. Maybe look at around somewhere around 8 degrees. Okay, so that's not too bad. Seems to have done the trick. We can see it's lifted over the actual main body of the fish there. That looks okay. Let's just put that back in Z and we'll give that a name. So we'll call that one Fin1. One. Press apply. And then we could go ahead and start a new component. So now let's have a look at this fin here. So I'm going to select this vector. I'm just going to go the same settings that we used last time. Press apply just to see how that looks. Okay, that actually isn't too bad. Now this fin is the fin that's actually on the other side of the fish. So we're going to make sure that's definitely underneath. Uh, the actual main body of the fish to give it the illusion that it is on the other side. So I'm actually quite happy with those settings. So let's just give that a name. We'll call that one Fin2. Go ahead, press apply, and then we'll just go and start a new component there. We'll select this vector here. Again, we'll just go with the same settings, apply that to see how that looks. Okay, so this time this fin is actually on the side that we're looking at this fish, so I need to make sure that we lift that fin up a little bit. So we'll look at applying a tilt, so we'll use a tilt option, set, so we're going to go from the bottom here, I'll just zoom out, we'll just move that down. Okay, so it's going to go from the bottom here and we're going to go up like so, and let's just see how that looks. I'm just going to press control just to pan my view. Uh, okay, so you can see we've got a little bit of a wedge there, so I just need to look at reducing that down. So let's just bring that down okay, in increments just so we can roughly see how that looks. Okay, so that 5.8 seems to be okay. Quite like the way that that looks. Put that back in Z, give that a name, call that one Fin3. Press apply, start a new component select this vector here, let's just go the same settings, press apply, 
Okay, so you can see that it's got quite a rounded shape. Now I just want to look at reducing the actual angle of that. So let's just maybe bring that down to 20 degrees and press space just to apply that. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. And then I'm also going to look at just reducing the base height as well. So make that point 0, 0,3, space to enter that in. Okay, so that's not too bad. One final thing is I just like to apply a tilt going from this bottom area here up in this angle to the top left over here. So we're going to use a tilt option. We're going to set this. We're going to go from here to here. Okay, so it's just done that at 5.8, and that's the settings that we used last time. Uh, so let's just take a look at that. You can still see that we've got quite a bit of a wedge there, so let's just minimise that. Okay, you can still see that in there. So again, let's just reduce that down and take a look at that. Okay, so that's not too bad. Put that back in Z, give that a name. I'm going to call this one Fin 4 apply that and we'll start a new component and we'll take this vector here I'm just going to go the same settings press apply okay that's not too bad give that a name call that one fin5 apply that and we'll go ahead start a new component and then we'll take this final fin here this time I'm just going to go and reduce that angle maybe make that 15 degrees there. Let's just apply that to see how that looks. Okay, it's not too bad. I might just want to give it a little bit more height in there, so give that a base height, 0 0.05. That's done it just enough just to lift that up a little. I like it. Let's put that in C. Give that a name. Call that one Fin 6. Press apply. And there we have all of our Fin components. So now we can close the Create Shape form down. So what I'd like to do now is apply a general smooth over the entire fish shape that we've got here. Then I'd like to look at sculpting in the details where the fins meet the fish's body. Now the easiest way for me to do this is by creating a new component based on all of the components that we can see here in the 3D view. And the way that we do that is by using this option up here. Create component from visible model. And when I select that, creates a component based on everything that we could see there in the 3D view. I'm actually going to take this component and I'm going to move that into the trout level. Okay, So you can see in the 3D view I still have access to all of the individual uh, components that form the main body of the fish shape. So I can see them all there. I have access to them. And if I just switch that off and just minimize that level and switch on the trout level, you can see that that copy of the visible model that we just created and that I moved into the trout level is now switched on and it's just one component. So it's one entire component that I could go ahead and apply my smooth filter to. So let's make the trout level the active level by selecting it. Then we're going to take this component into the smooth filter. I guess it's going to do it at default around 50%. Okay, that's a little bit too much. So I'm just going to knock that back a little bit, maybe to around 20, 25%. Okay, that seems to have applied quite a nice smooth there. So I'm just going to go ahead, press OK. And so now we're ready to blend in the bottom three fins into the fish's body. So it's going to take that component, go into the sculpting tools. I just want to maximise the 3D view there. I'm going to use the smooth option, diameter around 45, strength 50, smoothness at 70. I want to make sure that our preserved transparency is switched on so that we don't blend our part into the modelling plane. And I'm just going to uncheck show grayscale background. We don't need that on. And then all I need to do then is just go back and forth over the overlap between the fin and the fish's body. And you can see that we're getting a nice blend there. So I'm just going back and forth. Um, my cursor's red because we're actually activating that smooth there. Okay, so that's not too bad. Let's come over to this one over here. So again, just going back and forth just to get rid of that harsh line, blend that in. If I wanted to, I could increase the diameter. If I felt more confident, uh, you could go ahead and increase your strength if you wanted to. Okay, this seems to be doing the trick. 
Again, you can see it's blending in to the fish's body there, so that looks okay. Then we've got this fin over here, so again, I'm just going to blend that into the fish's body just by going back and forth until we get rid of that line, or at least just smooth that line out. Okay, and that seems to have got rid of that line there, so I'm happy with that. So go ahead, press keep, and then we'll press OK. So let's just switch that off for the time being. I'm going to switch the texture back on that we created at the start of this session. Now you can see that we've got quite a lot of speckling, a lot of noise in this component and that's quite typical of digital images unless they've been created in a graphics program and have been saved in a very high quality format. So we need to think about two things here. So firstly we need to look at smoothing this component and then we need to think about the Z heights. Now the Z heights are auto generated from the image so where the light areas are we've got height and where the dark areas are in the image we have less Z height. So we need to look at checking the Z height before we overlay it onto our fish model. So let's use the smooth filter just to smooth out a lot of the noise there. So going to go into the smooth filter, again it does it at default 50%, let's just knock that back a little. Okay, I quite like the way that looks, so let's just go ahead and press OK. And then we're going to select that component, let's go into the properties form. We can see the current shape height is just over 0.14, okay, so that's quite a lot of height there. So we're just going to look at decreasing that, we're just going to make this very shallow at 0.05 then press space bar to enter that in. We can see we've got a nice text, nice smoothed out texture there with very little height. So let's just put that in Z and then we could go ahead and close that down. And so now that we've decreased the height of that model, we could look at overlaying it on top of our visible model. So let's just tile our windows. We're going to switch on the copy of our visible model and we can see that that very small height from the textures has been added on top of our model. Okay, So we've got more of a realistic look there, so that looks great. I'm going to put that in Z. Last thing that we need to do is look at cropping our texture to the actual shape of our model. So if that's selected, we're going to hold down shift and then we're going to use the option here to clear area of selected components that's just going to remove everything outside there. And so if we go ahead and maximize the 3D view, we can take a look at that. You can see we've got quite a pleasing result there. That texture just overlaying the overall fish model. We've got quite a good representation of that trout. And so the quality of the component that you create when you import an image is really going to depend a lot on the image itself. If the image is low resolution, then it's probably not going to give you a good component. Also, if the image has a lot of shadows or highlights, light or dark areas, when they translate into Z heights of the component, then that will also probably not give you something that is going to be very useful compared to the texture component that we've got here. So a good way to check the quality of an image before you create any vectors or components is to import it into Aspire, roughly size it up and run a smooth over it just to see what it looks like. If it looks okay in that stage, then you should be okay to use it like we've done in our example here. You may also be able to use the sculpting tools to tidy it up, or it may be that the quality is just not good enough to create any useful texture for a part that we'd like to machine. And so that concludes this 3D modeling exercise. So let's just go to File, Save As, and in the Trout Files project folder, you'll find the trout underscore 3D modeling dot CRV 3D file in there.